viewers welcome back to our channel ravindra for students if anybody watching our channel first time please see all the videos and if you really like them please click on like button as well as please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on bell icon to get the notification when uploaded any new video so without wasting the time in this video we are going to see how to understand the coulomb's law in a easiest manner and within less time quickly so carlos agustin de coulomb has invented a law famously known as coulomb's law in the year 1785 so basically carlos agustin de coulomb was invented this law when he was working as a scientist in physics department Coulomb's law is basically an experimental law of physics which can be used to find out the force between stationary electrically charged particles so that means coulomb has conducted his experiments by considering two finite point charges those point charges are called electrically charged particles so what he has invented in his experiment is so by considering two charges charge 1 charge 2 like this if first one is having a positive charge and second one is also having the positive charge then coulomb invented that uh, there exist a force between them so this force is called a repulsive force because both are having the same type of charge that is positive charge then there exist a repulsive force so that repulsive force will be along the line joining these two charges like this So they will repel each other like this if they are having like amount of charges. That means same amount of charges of same sign. Then another case, if you are having the same point charges, one is having the positive charge, another one is having the negative charge. Now, now there also exists a force. Now this force is called a force of attraction. This force of attraction will also exist along the line joining them like this. They will attract each other. now in the form of statement coulomb's law states that it will be the line joining them so that is the force existing between them whether it is repulsive force or attractive force that force will be along the line joining those two point charges and that force is directly proportional to the product of the charges q1 and q2 and it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them these two statements he obtained by conducting his experiments so many times in uh, uh, different different mediums with, uh, by changing uh, so many parameters so by doing the experiment many times he has given this conclusion so that's why it is famously popularized as coulomb's law so if you put this statements in a mathematical form f is proportional to q1 q2 the product of the charges and divided by the square of the distance r so here r is the square of the distance q1 q2 is the product of the charges and here this is called proportionality if you want to eliminate this proportionality we can take f equals to some constant k so that k is called as proportionality constant like this f equals to k into the remaining product and r square in the denominator will come as it is q1 q2 by r square here k is called the proportionality constant and this k value also given by the coulomb as k equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not so here 1 by 4 pi epsilon not epsilon not is the permittivity of the free space so if the experiment was conducted in free space then in calculation of k we have to consider k equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not but for any other medium other than free space or vacuum so we have to consider the k value as k equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon where epsilon is permittivity of the medium then the relation between this permittivity and the permittivity of the free space is given as epsilon of any medium is given by the product of epsilon not into epsilon r where epsilon r is the relative permittivity of the medium or it is also called as dielectric constant of that medium now this epsilon not value was given by the coulomb as 8.854 into 10 to the power of minus 12 farads per meter and it is also equals to 
1 by 4 pi into if you substitute this value and it is uh, having another value say 36 pi into 10 power minus 9 which is equals to finally giving the k value as 9 into 10 power 9 meters for farad. Now let us see how to apply the Coulomb's law for practical cases. For that let us assume that we are having origin here. From the origin let us assume that a point Q1 and Q2 are placed at a distance vectors of R1 bar and R2 bar. Now if we want to calculate the force on both the charges Q1 and Q2 separated by a distance of R bar between them then there will be two chances of forces to calculate. One is the force on Q1 which is represented as F12 bar which indicates that the force on Q1 due to Q2 and another one is F21 bar which represents the force on Q2 due to Q1. And as of now what is the formula we are having according to Coulomb's is F equals to K into Q1 Q2 by R square. Now we are having two different cases for this practical case. So first let us calculate F12 bar. So to calculate F12 bar in place of R we have to consider either R12 or R21. R12 for calculation of F12 bar and R21 for the calculation of F21 bar. So F12 bar first let us calculate that equals to K. K already we know let us assume uh, this entire system was placed in free space. So K is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q1 Q2 divided by. So in place of R what we have to consider is the magnitude of R12 bar. The magnitude of R12 bar is the distance whole square. So that is square into we have to get the unit vector along the direction. Already we have seen in the previous animation that the force exists between those two charges should be along the line joining them. Here we are considering along the or the unit vector is A12 bar. Similarly F21 bar. So that means here we can represent the unit vector A12 bar like this and similarly on Q2 along the same direction of R bar you will have in opposite direction A21 bar. Using this A21 bar we can express F21 bar equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q1 Q2 by now in place of R12 bar we will get the reverse that is R21 bar whole square and in place of A12 bar you will get the reverse unit vector that is A21 bar. So here R12 bar is given by the difference between two position vectors R2 bar and R1 bar. Similarly R21 bar is given by R1 bar minus R2 bar and finally if you compare the final forces at point Q1 and at another point Q2 they will be in opposite. So finally what we will get is F12 bar is equals to minus F21 bar. Now let us see the same forces on Q1 and Q2 in other forms also. So as of now we are, what we are having is F12 bar and F2 bar expressed in terms of unit vectors A12 bar and A21 bar where R12 bar equals to R2 bar minus R1 bar and R21 bar is R1 bar minus R2 bar and finally we got that F12 bar is equals to minus of F21 bar. So the same expression can also be expressed as F12 bar equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon Q1 Q2 by. Now in the numerator instead of writing the unit vector A12 bar I have considered the original vector R12 bar. So by using the relation A12 bar equals to R12 bar by the magnitude of R12 bar. So this can be written. So in the denominator what you will get is originally you are having the magnitude of R12 bar whole square and it should be multiplied with another magnitude of R12 bar. So finally you will get a R12 bar whole cube because this we got by using the relation A12 bar is equals to R12 bar by magnitude of R12 bar. Similarly on another point charge we will get the reverse force that is F21 bar equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 by here R21 bar so the denominator should be multiplied with the another magnitude so finally you will get R21 bar magnitude to the power of 3 here A21 bar is replaced with the R21 bar by magnitude of R21 bar. Uh, similarly 
we can represent in another form directly in the form of position vectors also that is r1 to bar equals to r2 bar minus r1 bar and r21 bar equals to r1 bar minus r2 bar so in these position vectors f1 to bar is represented as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 divided by so we are taking in the numerator r2 bar minus r1 bar so in the denominator we will get the same position vectors whole cube and then Similarly, other force F21 bar will be given in the same way. In place of R2 bar minus R1 bar, we will get the reverse. That is R1 bar minus R2 bar. And similarly, in the denominator also, R1 bar minus R2 bar whole cube. As of now, we have seen the different expressions for forces on both Q1 and Q2 in various forms that is directly in terms of r bar in terms of unit vector and in terms of position vectors now we can extend this coulomb's law not only for the two point charges it is not limited to two point charges it can be extended to n number of point charges also so for this n number of point charges we can simply apply the superposition theorem so that is the total force on a particular charge is the sum of the force due to n number of point charges so now for that let us assume that from the origin, we are having n number of point charges q1, q2 and so on up to q1 and they are positioned with their position vectors of r1 bar, r2 bar and rn bar as shown like this. Now we want the force on another point charge q which is positioned at a position vector r bar. Now the total force on this point charge q is the sum of the force due to first point charge q1 that is represented as F1 bar and the force due to Q2 which is represented as F2 bar and so on up to the force due to Qn which is represented as Fn bar. Now the total force on this point charge Q is the sum of all these forces F1 bar plus F2 bar and so on up to Fn bar. So this can be represented with a, a sigma notation the total force F bar is equals to so here in order to use the sigma notation, I can make q by 4 pi epsilon naught as constant term and for the remaining, I can take a constant sum k equals to 1 to n, then I can write in place of q 1 to q n, I can use the q k notation. That is, it is given by q by 4 pi epsilon naught is common, then sigma k equals to 1 to n, the remaining what we are having q k by, so in place of r1 bar, what we will get? So this final point charge on which we want the force that is r bar minus we will get a first in first term we will get r1 bar in the second term we will get r2 bar and so on up to so we are using k equals to 1 to n so in place of q1 q2 we will represent generally as r k bar like similarly in the denominator the first position vector we will get r bar and the second position vector is r k bar and the magnitude whole power 3. So like this we can calculate the force due to n number of point charges also using Coulomb's law. It is not restricted to only two point charges and already we know this force can be measured in Newton. The Coulomb's law can be used not only to find out the force, it can be used to find out the electric field or electric field intensity or electric field strength also which is related with force as E bar equals to F bar by Q which is measured in words or which is also equals to Newton per Coulomb. As of now, we have expressed the Coulomb's law for the case of two point charges as well as n number of point charges. In same way, the Coulomb's law can be extended to the continuous charge distributions like line charge, surface charge and volume charge also. For this, what we have to do is we have to replace the sigma by the a respective integral for example line charge it should be replaced by integral over l and for surface charge integral over s and for volume charge integral over s and the total charge qk will be replaced by the corresponding in case of line charge it is rho l dl bar in case of surface charge it is rho s ds bar and in case of volume charge it is rho v dv as shown here for example line charge it is z bar equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught in the sigma is replaced by integral over l and QK was replaced by Rho LDL bar 
and the remaining terms comes as it is. So here also we are considering the position vectors form representation. This is what line charge. Similarly, for surface charge it is given by integral over s rho s ds bar and all the remaining terms remain as it is and for volume charge integral over v and rho v dv and all the remaining terms remains as it is like this. This is for volume charge. So Coulomb's law can be extended to point charges, n number of point charges as well as continuous charge distributions of line surface and volume charges also. Weavers, if you want uh, the solutions for the problems on Coulomb's law, don't forget to watch the lengthy videos whose link was given in the description with this video. And uh, anybody watching our channel first time, don't forget to subscribe and as well as to make notifications for that you have to click on the bell icon. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.